Hey what is up guys and welcome back to the channel so in today's video I'm going to bring to you a brand new car review so this is the final of the three new cars we got in update 1.17 this is the Ford Roadster I believe uh, a very classic old school looking car and instantly when I see that rear end I think Bernat 2 uh, with the hot rod um, I believe this is the car it was based on uh, so yeah I mean awesome looking car i mean i really love uh, these old school cars and it's great to kind of see one that i feel like should have been in um Gran Turismo 7 for you know quite a while um you should have definitely been there at the start in a legendary dealer um you know the more of these kind of cars the merrier especially at the price point as you can see 450k uh, for such a cool looking car and from what i can gather you can absolutely tune this into oblivion and it basically becomes the kind of old school hot rod looking dragster it should be um out of the box though you know how we do these reviews by now um i cannot make tuning adjustments or upgrades i basically get one lap around the norschleife um to kind of sort of test these cars um how they feel uh, straight out the gate and then uh, obviously i put my opinion together and we kind of see where it ranks at the end on a lap time leaderboard as you may know we're over 20 episodes now so not every car can possibly make it on uh, this being actually the weakest performance points uh, vehicle that we've tested the majority of the machines we've tested so far have been uh, full out race machines uh, group 2, group 1, uh, some GT4 cars, some GT3 um, and obviously some of the uh, invitational cars so overall what's my opinion on this car out the box um, when I first uh, hopped in, um, the first part of the lap, very slow. <laughs> um, nah, I mean, I knew this wasn't going to be an absolute ridiculously performing car. I, mean, I believe it's got like 197 brake horsepower um, and only three gears, um, believe it or not. So a pretty awesome little feature. I mean, I kind of liked having <laughs> a few less gears. Um, the lap itself goes by pretty actually not as slow as you you kind of think um i believe we came up with like a nine minute lap time um but yeah for me this is kind of where i get some of the most yeah, i guess enjoyable driving time in this game so if i'm not going flat out around like the norse life i get much more time to kind of like look around and take in the detail which may sound weird but I feel like this is where that car excels. Is like it's a great cruiser if you want to just kind of potter all around the track um, and take in some of the views, some of the scenery, and you know some of the little details. Like even just like you can see there, the marshals stood on certain corners, or you know little campsites and such. Then um, there's worse ways to go about it than driving sort of this all open top classic hot rod style um, machine. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, just taking in the scenery and kind of cruising around um, while having, you know, a bit of fun. Um, as you can see, the car very likes to, you know, very much likes to get its rear end out. Um, and it's just awesome. Like, I mean, that is another thing to note because there's, like, not much power compared to the more modern machines. When this gets its back end out, you feel like you're drifting around forever or sort, sort of like power sliding. Um, forever and it's really controllable really nice to like keep them little little slides going um, <laughs> a bit of a, a bit of a pain around the corners I'm not gonna lie uh, but because you've not got like a ridiculous amount of power it doesn't kind of overdo it you can sort of cruise around and keep them drifts going keep them slides going and just sort of take the whole game in um, and it's cars like this that really kind of excel at that um, sometimes it is nice to just go for a little bit of a slower pace and just, you know, like I said, take it all in. And this car is literally ideal at that. So obviously the Group 3 Suzuki um, that I did a kind of review on uh, day one when that came out. Um, I feel like that would have been overlooked as well as this. Um, but I feel like the Suzuki would have got a little bit more attention. Um, obviously because a lot of the daily races involve group 3 cars so people are going to be kind of curious how that's going to take on um, you know some of the daily races and such and then obviously we had the uh, the big one the Suzuki Escudo Pikes Peak um, which is obviously a very very um, 
much loved car in the Gran Turismo scene. Um, I mean, there's nothing much you can really say on that. And then there was this, obviously the Ford Roadster. Um, I remember when sort of the trailers and such when it was revealed, this car just got not even a second look. I feel like a lot of people was like, oh, right, cool, another old car like that I'll never use. Um, and maybe, yeah, maybe that is the case for me. Is it, you know, a car that you're going to take into races and online lobbies? Not really. I mean, like I said, you can do some awesome tune into it and make it like a really quick drag car. So if you kind of want to go to the meeting places and, you know, play about with it there, then, you know, you can do it. Um, but for me, kind of why I liked the look of this car is, again, like I said, that cruising, that classic feel of just, you know, going around the track, taking it all in, taking in some of the sights, the sounds. Um, and sort of just enjoying driving this old school um, looking machine and yeah I mean I was expecting this car to maybe be you know on price uh, in the price range of some of the more expensive ones around like 10 million or so you know maybe I'm just overthinking that <laughs> as you can see we go off there yeah uh, this is what I mean them old big old brakes not not great for stopping um, but yeah I kind of feel like <clears throat> you know this car really does excel at that and if you take it for what it is it's not a performance machine it's not something you're going to compete for wins in it's just a you know a cool old looking car a decent price of 450k so it takes no time to earn it and you just want to take in them sights and sounds and just honestly you'll you'll have it you'll you will kind of have a lot of joy doing it um, if you're like me and a bit bit more laid back and don't want to take the game serious 24-7 because at this point of GT7's life I feel like it's in the kind of place where we need things like this to sort of take us out of that whole competitive scene or the money grinding scene and you know just kind of take a step back and enjoy the game for what it is a visually stunning you know homage to cars like you know th that's what it's all about collecting cars and this is definitely one you need to add to your list just because you know just just because as you can see the slide there and that's what i mean it's fun to drive yes it's slow yes it only has three gears no it's not going to be anything performance wise but cruising around popping some slides and that just kind of sums this car up for 450k it's just some of the most fun allegedly driving you're going to have in the game so this is the point of the video where i'm going to go quiet i'm going to let you listen to the engine note let me know what you think i personally think it sounds okay yeah it's not nothing really that special um, but yeah let me know your opinions in the comments so putting this lap in did I feel like I had to compete against anything? No, I just felt like I could just cruise around, have fun. And like I said, that's what this car's about, honestly. You know, you're not going to be disappointed. Um, 450k, like I said, awesome little car. One thing to note is like the detail in the interior. It's pretty awesome to see them like old dials and such and like the big old steering wheel and it's kind of the way it's laid out it's pretty awesome so like first person's great um with this car and obviously like the cool bulky look um i, I especially love the rear end of this thing and sort of uh, when you're going over the bumps as well like the suspension sort of you know you can see it working um and i think a lot of cars you don't really get to see that because of the, you know you've got big wide arches and such kind of covering them um and just sort of you know, looking back on your replays and such when you use this car, it's just a pretty, you know, pretty cool sight. And um, like I said, it's an okay sound. Uh, nothing to really massively um, write home about in the sort of sound department. But visually and sort of the look of it is just, just second to none. Awesome looking car. Um, like I said, I mean, if you're going to buy this car, buy it for the, you know, the cruising, the looks. That awesome classic feel it has. Yes, it's slow. <laughs> Yes, it's not the quickest, but, you know, if you're just sort of mid-corner and all of a sudden the back end steps out and you can just feel like you can just keep it going and you don't feel the need that you've got to constantly catch it um, because you're not going to be pumping in these insane laps, then, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's all about fun. Like, for me at this point in Grand Turismo 7's life, this game is just about having fun and kind of just testing all these different cars that we've got in insane detail. 
And I know a lot of people seem to think, oh, well, we had files on cars back in the day, but these cars are much more detailed. Yes, the other roster's a little bit outdated. Um, but yeah, for me, Grand Trans 7 is about having fun, and I hope it is for you guys too. And that's when you're really going to be able to, you know, appreciate cars like this just for what they are, just fun, classic cars that you can just go take a few laps around and, you know, maybe pick it up, do some insane tuning and sort of upgrades to it. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about, by the way. You know, awesome, like, old dials and the, that big wheel. And <laughs> you know, the fact, I believe it's an auto. Um, even though I was doing, the, you know, the gears myself, you can just, you know, I cannot really see the driver doing any of the gear changes. But, yeah, I mean, just the onboard view. I just really like it. I mean, it's very sort of, I guess, back to vehicle routes. There's none of these, you know, insane digital dials and big turbo gauges and such. It's just, you know, classic um, cluster with a nice big old steering wheel. Um, watching your driver's hands sort of hold this really huge wheel is is pretty awesome. Um, but like I said, I mean, pretty, pretty great detail. Um, I feel like they kind of really nailed it. I mean, if you ever look at the uh, interior of this car, you know, on images and such, um, they pretty much nailed that kind of feeling. So overall, we did a lot of time of 9 minute 10.942, massively off the pace of anything else. But, you know, who cares? That's not what we're really here for with this car. It was more of a, let's go take it out, have a cruise, you know, put in the fastest lap we can. But yeah, I mean, that's not really where this car's going to excel, um, like I've said throughout the video. So as you're going to know, I mean, if you've been watching this series by now, only 20, uh, 20 cars can make a lap time leaderboard and it's just not going to make it sadly so in 20th place we've got the Bugatti Veyron with a 7 minute 28.844 so that's going to be this video thank you so much for watching thanks for joining me on this you know road to testing all the cars in Gran Turismo 7 don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you all in the next one take care everybody cheers